And I think that uh, the Zionist Jews who are running these big banks and our Federal Reserve, which is not run by the federal government, they need to be run out of this country. I'm a Jew. Why are you fighting with us? Why? You got the money. That's why you're fighting, you Jewish man. We got the, we got I got the, the money because I work for 40 years. I work, years. God bless. My father worked 40 years and we have a foreclosed house. My mother's dead because she had a heart attack from stress. You tell the corporation to stop calling my mother. What? What? No, 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 I don't understand what you're saying. You can't even speak English. Are you Israeli? Go back to Israel. population in this country. They have a firm grip on America's media, finances, and also in other uh, areas of production. So what would you say to people who say you're anti-Semitic or don't like Jews? I would tell them that uh, Jesus, in the Gospel according to St. John, Jesus uh, referred to uh, certain elements in the Jewish community, community as children of the devil, chapter 8, I believe. Uh, but having said that, the fact of the matter is, is that there is clear, the, the fingerprints of these Jewish billionaires and hedge fund managers and bankers is clear and convincing. So you against all Jews or just... Uh, I'm against the Jews who are robbing America or who are silent about their brethren robbing America. Google Jewish billionaires. Half the billionaires in this country are Jewish. Jews represent 2% of the population, but they are that 1% that seems to uh, control America. And you can also Google Jews control America. There's a lot of uh, research that's been done to prove that there appears to be some kind of ethnic grip on the American economy. Look at the Democratic Party, the Republican Party. In the last 30 days, there's about 20 stories in the New York Times all recording how all the presidential candidates are tri tripping over themselves. Who can please the Jews? I am not a liberal. I am not a conservative. I do not dwell exclusively on the left or right. I am not a stasis or a libertarian. I am me. I have made a video speaking about the Tea Party. I made a video that expressed my concerns about the current movements potency and my support for those who select this path. However, when I made the videos, I did not attempt to bash anyone. Politics is a dirty, disgusting business.
talking about it makes me feel dirty. However, it amazes me the division that comes from speaking rationally about protected groups, whether they are protected by rule of law or protected by political correctness. I am speaking specifically about Zionism. Now, there are some people who think that Zionism is a big part of our woes, financially and otherwise. I will tell you what I think in a few shakes of a lamb's tail, but first, why are certain members of the Tea Party attacking the people who are protesting in the Occupy Wall Street movements? Why do some claim that the Occupy Wall Street movements was never about confronting Wall Street, but only a cover to promote liberal beliefs. I think certain Tea Party members will use the actions of some protesters to block scrutiny or to deflect negative media focus from their own group. Some examples of protected classes are race, religion, gender identity, ethnicity, nationality, gender, sexual orientation, and disability. Should we not rationally, fairly, and without venomous intent be able to critique a member of the protected class? I say we should. Many times in today's political climate we see an abundance of mislabeling purposeful abuse of words or the conflating of definitions to defame others from doing exactly that rationally fairly and without venomous intent critique a member of the protected class producing dissenting views that are used to appraise critically does not equate to hate now personally i think it's not workable or appropriate to introduce thought crimes or speech restrictions on the public. It works against freedom of speech. This said, we should be able to express unpopular opinion without concern of retaliation for expressing ourselves. Hate speech has conveniently weaseled around our cherished value of freedom of expression. It, alone with political correct bondage prevents us from being able to say what we want when we want. I oppose hate speech on principle, but I do not oppose it because I want to promote hate. This said, no matter the intention, but especially if our intention dwells within the realm of being rational and objective, and is free from deception and bias, then we should be able to engage in debate, examination, and conversation regarding members of the protected class. This also means that protesters should be able to use offensive words and phrases to convey political messages as stated in Cohen v. California, 403 U.S. 15 1971. Some thoughts on Zionism. The Anti-Defamation League defines Zionism as the Jewish national movement of rebirth and renewal in the land of Israel. The reading of this tells us it's not equated to Judaism. It also tells us it is a political organization for it deals with the Jewish national movement. Now the suffix ism tells us it's a belief. Zionism is the belief that Jewish people have a right to exist in peace and dignity in their own land. Some will argue that being anti-Zionism means more than criticism of Israel. I say it depends on the person's intentions. Now, if we use the definition I provided, we have a problem. For it forces one to pick, to pick a position regarding what is and what is not Jewish land. It begs us 
to determine if the Jewish people should solely be the decision makers regarding what land is rightfully theirs. I do not deny. Listen carefully. I do not deny Jewish people's rights to exist, but I do not support, based on my studies, the Jewish illegal occupation of Palestine. If I had convincing evidence that proved differently, then I could prove Israel's right to exist. Israel is a country and not the body of the people that occupy it. It should not be treated as if it is. My stance, in the eyes of some, would be anti-Semitic. This is an erroneous assessment. This also is nothing more than a political trap. A trap set by the current popular definition. I am not opposed to the existence of a group. I am opposed to their actions. These actions are deserving of criticism and contempt. Let's now turn our focus back on the protesters. Assuming they are not actively promoting anti-Semitic or racist rhetoric or dogma, is it lawfully inappropriate for them to carry signs that condemn Zionism and not the Jewish people? I say, it is not anti-Semitic. However, Verbally attacking Jewish people because they are Jewish is unethical and should be scorned. Maybe some protesters are rightfully angry. Ally or not, we give Israel money that should be used to help struggling Americans. Should Americans suffer because money that could have been directed to ease their suffering was not available in part to its allocation to Israel's interest. Why are we willing to cut social security and welfare, but are willing to give more money to Israel and the military industrial complex? Sounds like madness to me. Sounds like madness to me. If Israel was suffering due to a natural disaster, and America had money to contribute to Israel's restoration and direct aid for all who resided there, then I would be in favor of this. However, we are not talking about a natural disaster here. According to Window into Palestine, until 2003, Israel received approximately one-third of the annual U.S. foreign aid budget. In 2005, the U.S. gave Israel more than $2.6 billion in aid, a budget exceeded only by U.S. aid to Iraq. By comparison, Jordan received $683.6 million, Rwanda received $77 million, and the occupied Palestinian territories received $348.2 million. It is stated also that the U.S. lends money to Israel, but these loans are frequently, frequently waived before any repayments are made. The Washington Report on Middle East Affairs has estimated that from 1974 through 2003, Israel benefited from more than 45 billion, 45 billion in waived loans from the U.S. If you were homeless, if you lost your job, if your unemployment benefits ran out and you diligently searched for unemployment, if your wages were drastically cut or you had your home repossessed, would you not feel betrayed when receiving this news? Would you not be angry? If your memory reported another saying to you, oh, sorry, there's nothing we can do for you. Yet, you researched what I told you and realized it was true. I cannot support any action that is done with purposeful intention to hurt another unless it was in self-defense. So, I am not showing blanket support. No, 
I am not showing blanket support for all who protest at the Occupy Wall Street movements. Four, I do not know their personal intentions. Some are out there to push their agenda, and as a result, are just polluting the watchers. Some are trying to reduce this movement to a political comfort zone they favor. For those who are protesting slavery under compound interest, bailouts, corporate oligarchy, poverty, abuse to human rights, promoting the end of the Federal Reserve, pushing for the end of all of these unnecessary wars, which will dramatically decrease when there are no banksters pushing for it. No private central bank issuing the public currency at interest, which leads to economic slavery via debt while financing all sides of the wars. Let that sink in. If this is your message, your fight, your protest, then I do support you. Notice all of the items listed do not conflict. I also support the right of an individual to make a political statement against political movements. Especially, especially ones that does not have origins in America. Would you not want to properly be informed regarding the history and current activity of your bedmate, whether it be political or otherwise? Friends, Friends, I leave you with these questions. Does Israel have anything to lose with the advancement or success of occupied Wall Street? If the balance of all of the protests actually did manifest, actually did manifest a change that benefited the people, would this change demand an end to the special, very special, Israel and America financial relationship? Would Israel's current influence over, some would say control over, the United States war machine end? Would the control of the U.S. veto at the United States Security Council exist no more? And will the media concentrate on the real concerns, or will the focus be placed on a few kooks who happen to be anti-Semitic, or pretending to be, in order to poison the well of what is occurring at the protest? Poison that allows the media to dismiss, show contempt, and ridicule the movement. Think about it. Think about it. Think about it.